Okay, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions and lots of questions going on. All those uh, newbies here mm -hmm. that are coming in, they don't, they've never seen frost before. So right. now they're coming and going, what happened to my plants? Why are they discolored? What happened? They were supposed to be beautiful. I thought they were tropical. No, we're a four-season <laughs> climate. So I'm sure we got lots of good questions this week. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Good to be here. What have you seen? Let me just turn that uh, for the vlog people uh, so they can see your name badge. I don't know that you can even hey. see it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking fabulous, my dear. Oh, fabulous. Thank you. Oh, yeah. You've been unloading pottery all week. We have been. So the, the 2023, yeah. believe it or not. It's hard to think of that. Pottery just landed. So we're, <laughs> we're stocking, get it going, kind of uh -huh. have it all going. So these are fancy glazed pots. It mm -hmm. looks like we'll, the, this whole uh, bottleneck of, of the ports coming in, yeah. things coming, supply chain is, is starting to ease up. Yes, it is. So we're starting to get more more. Mm -hmm supplies more often that kind right. of stuff which is where we want to be mm -hmm. so yeah we definitely got new pottery in so it's a good time to peruse that yeah especially if there's certain colors you're looking for certain sizes you're looking for you want to match things up yeah the sooner you come in and shop yeah, you want the better first selection dibs. the more you're going to have that ability yeah. to do that yeah. because it's this is not one we restock every weekend i no. mean it's <laughs> You Two or three it, times yeah. a year, that's it. Right. So, so you should explain to folks um, to pottery. So, so pottery, folks that have let's say from the deserts, mm -hmm. they're used to that uh, Mexican clay, that red clay with a charcoal. What's the difference in quality? Are there different qualities of oh, clay, and yeah. how do you tell? Of course, there's different. Yeah, of qualities, course, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so the the wonderful clay, the um, Oh, what's the, the Talavera, all those pottery, beautiful. And they work wonderful in the desert areas. But as we're experiencing, we get frost, we get snow, we get moisture, we yeah. get rain. And if you don't have a good quality pot that's been high fired, moisture gets in there. And then we get the freeze and thaw and the expanding and the cracking. And that's where you get the cracking, the crazing um, on your pots. So, yes, you definitely want to invest a little bit more money to get a higher quality pot um, that's going to hold up. I mean, we've had some pots, what, like 20 years? Yeah, too long. We're starting to get tired. <laughs> so I'm getting tired of them. I want some new colors. I know. <laughs> but it's worth the investment to have that pottery hold up. You don't have to worry about dumping it, taking it into the garage for the winter yeah. or protecting it. You can leave it out year round, uh, plant in it year round. Yeah. And, and be fine. So the right container. So your Italian clay, that red, your the thing, the the pots that your grandparents grew in, mm -hmm. those do not winter over here. They crack because of that freeze thaw cycle. Your Talavera, the the fancy Spanish uh, mm -hmm. kinds of German pots, yeah, they break in the winter here at this altitude. They freeze and thaw. That's more for right. Phoenix. Mm -hmm. uh, your high fired uh, uh, Malaysian, Italian. Uh, 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 Chinese, Vietnamese, mm -hmm. uh, Indian pots are they're high, good quality clay, and they send them to the kiln. They're thicker, higher quality clay, and they go through them. And they don't, they don't crack. Right. So they, they're going to be a little bit more, mm -hmm. but you get years of oh. worry-free gardening yeah, out of them. Definitely, definitely. So Thank yeah, you. come check your selection yeah. now because uh, it's the best time to look. You know what I love about pottery. What, They're it? beautiful. Well, no, that breaks back breaking. <laughs> but we, we carry, we, we specialize in resort size or, or large home mm -hmm. size containers. So they're bigger right. than normal. They're heavier than normal, but they're bigger mm -hmm. and they, they last. But they're beautiful. Even let's say this last cold just took out all of your geraniums. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful with or without plants. They're right. so pretty. It's sort of the colors, the textures, right. the. They're gorgeous. They're pieces of art mm -hmm. that you garden in. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Questions? Check them out. Questions. Speaking of freezing and thawing, Dan would like to know, does he need to mulch around his peonies, roses, and other perennials for the winter? Yeah. And when would he get that mulch on? Yeah. So so your timing's right. So yes, now. Um, I mean, the ground isn't going to freeze for another month. I mean, yes, we get frost. You saw a little bit of snowflakes. Yeah. You see some weather, but the ground is not going to freeze like ice. You're not going to get a permafrost kind of thing. So that happens in December, January. Mm -hmm. So you got some time. Take some time. Do it. You, the book says a two to three inch layer on top of your flower beds. 
And what that does for you, folks that are, are new to this freezing area, this freeze-thaw cycle, see, if we're in the Midwest, it freezes and stays frozen. Yeah. You're good. You don't have to do anything hardly. Here, because of the freeze and the thaw, the ground will freeze at night, thaw during the day. All those roots in that top layer of mm -hmm. the soil, that top four inches or so, it breaks all those root hairs that were forming in there. Yeah. So you're like, you're damaging the plant because of that free saw. It's it's an altitude thing. It's <clears> not a four season thing. It's a four season with this altitude and the freeze and the thaw. So you want to insulate two to three inches, take a mulch. Uh, manure could be used uh, this time of year, probably. Mulch and cedar bark and some of those are better. Mm -hmm. uh, but but two to three inch over, over those delicate plants. I would say roses would benefit from that. Uh, lilacs, things that bloom in the spring, just nice, nice, pretty oval kind of round shape around it. And it, it just insulates that plant. The worms will be attracted to it. It'll add more. It just does a lot for you over the long run. So Dan, yeah, get on it, man. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a nice day and get out there. All right. Paula in Prescott Valley uh, has a question about watering. So yeah. she has several things that are new in her yard, Good. trees and shrubs. Right. Wants to know how you water those now and through the winter. Sure. And will that same watering schedule hold true for trees and shrubs that are established, been yeah. in the ground for a few years? So we, I just changed, I had a doctor's appointment um, earlier today. They, of course, they kept you waiting. I'm there for an hour. On my phone, I went, okay, you know what? I'm here. What can I do? I changed my <laughs> irrigation while I was sitting there in the doctor's office waiting to get in. So we've got these one of these fancy mm -hmm. Wi-Fi remote, whatever. It's very sophisticated yes. uh, and complicated. Mm -hmm. So I changed that out. And what I did is I moved all the cycles. There's like nine valves up six hours. So what I wanted was I wanted to move everything to the middle of the day watering because mm -hmm. it's usually not freezing here. I mean, right. here at this elevation, even in January, it's 40, 50 degrees. Yeah. At night, it's 19 degrees, but during the day, it's nice. I'll water during the day. Mm -hmm. I was watering like uh, uh, containers every one to two days. I backed it off every four days. The landscape, trees and shrubs, we were watering every five to seven days. I moved it to every seven to 10 days. So I just, mm -hmm. eh, a couple times a, a month, two or three times a month, watering your roses, your trees, your shrubs, your vines plenty. And, and, and middle of the day, you're not going to damage your systems. You're going to have ice forming out of those drip heads. Uh, containers, I went to basically a couple times a week, mm -hmm. something like that, uh, in the middle of the day. So that, that's what we did. And that works really, really well for us. We do water through the winter here, especially for Paula, new things. Right. If you had a new thing in the ground, those roots have not grown out far enough yet to really make it really robust. So we can, I know we've had some moisture this week, but that might be it for two months. Right. You never know <laughs> here in the mountains. So if, if you, if you have a really heavy wet storm or something, maybe you cut one of those out go once a, once a month, but really uh, if, if a plant goes into cold when it's really dry, you'll get what we call winter kill or winter damage right. or winter burn mm -hmm. several names with the tips of those plants the branches will, will die back. The heart of the plant will stay alive. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the easy way to get around that is just keep it moist. Right. If you see a real cold cycle coming like this week, water before the cold gets here. A hydrated plant goes through the cold far better than a dry plant. It's kind of counterintuitive because you wouldn't put your, yeah. your little puppy dog out there and <laughs> hose them down with water. But you do with your plants. If you're one of those strong plant parents and you're trying to nurture and care for your Plants like a puppy dog, stop doing that. Treat them like a plant, water them, hydrate them, and they can take care of themselves. Uh, even those plants that hibernate underground, mm -hmm. they're going to benefit from staying moist through that winter. Right. They'll come out better next spring mm -hmm. by just sporadic watering in the middle yeah. of the day. Out of time. Great questions, Paula. Thank you. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back right after this.